Welcome back. We are going to meet an adventurer from Edinburgh now who is preparing for one of the world's most dangerous rowing expeditions in the Antarctic. And that's not all. He's doing it just months after having open heart surgery. Incredible. Uh, Jamie Douglas Hamilton and five other rowers will be setting off on the 950-mile journey from Elephant Island to South Georgia in January. They're hoping to raise more than £100,000 for the British Heart Foundation. So much to talk to you about. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, tell us a little bit, first of all, the inspiration behind it. Why, why are you doing this? This is the last ocean that hasn't been rowed. The Scotia Sea is seen as the hardest and most challenging row. It's never actually even been attempted, let alone, you know, actually rowed. And the reason it's so dangerous, if you, the Southern Ocean is the roughest ocean in the world. You've got a current that goes around Antarctica that doesn't stop. Those storms carry on going. And once it comes to Drake Passage, that energy is compressed. And then it comes through the Scotia Sea. And that's why it's so challenging. And this is actually the brainchild of Fian Paul, um, an Icelandic uh, explorer, who's now broken records on all the major oceans. And this is his last one. So he's done the Arctic, Antarctic, Indian, Pacific. Wow. And yeah, so he completes the Ocean's Grand Slam. But wow. yeah, this is the last, the last one left. I think it's the most record-breaking explorer of all times. So. What are the conditions like there at the moment? What are you expecting to come up against? Yeah, it's, it's well, <laughs> I mean, just last week, an ocean liner was going through the Scotia Sea to Antarctica when it got hit by a wave that was so big that it smashed every window on one side of an ocean liner. <sighs> Killing one person, injuring four others. Okay, and that's that's the <laughs> so, you get eighty foot. And you're going into that sea with a little rowing boat. We're we're we're, 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 we're one foot <laughs> off. We're one foot off the ground. Uh, well, I'm one foot off the sea, but um, but small is actually better because you go up and down like a cork. So as long as the wave doesn't break and we go over big waves, you actually go up and down with them. So being small and light does have at its advantage. Uh, and Tessa mentioned about this this open heart surgery which you had recently. I mean. I, Medically, is this is this safe for you to do? And are you are you in the right headspace and physically right space to do it? Well, it all came as a big shock. I, I never thought I'd be in this position. And the condition I had is yeah, it affects one to two percent of the population. And I only found out about this in May. I had the operation mm. in, in August. And uh, at first, the cardiologist was you know, very unsure about it. Um, but they've yeah, they've been so supportive. And now they're they're all yeah supportive for it. Uh, but it's pushing the boundaries of what's possible. For eight weeks, I can lift up a kettle. You know, that's, that's how it's your, your, your sternum is yeah. actually split. Uh, and it takes wow. a long time. When you start going back into training, you're doing times that not even a beginner would do. And slowly by slowly, you're improving, but at a very slow rate. Mm. And it's only really in the last week where I've been able to do the times that I used to be able to do. And so it is, it is really touch and go, mm. pushing the boundaries. This is going to be an incredible feat. And I know there's one man who's going to be in the back of your mind while you're doing it. He's a man called Harry McNish. Tell us about him. Harry McNish was on the endurance expedition. And uh, Shackleton, for a long time, has been idolised and, and worshipped as, as a great uh, leader. Mm. And there's a lot of ways he was. He was an eternal optimist. But at the same time, there were people around him, Worsley and McNish. Um, the reason endurance um, sunk is because they had an option to actually to winter in a bay in Antarctica and he wanted to go closer to the start line. And mm. his captain advised him to winter there and he didn't. He, he went close to the start line and the boat was crushed. Manish built the sledges that went across the ice. He was the only person to stand up to Shackleton when he was dragging the boats across the ice, getting holes in the hulls of the lifeboats. And, uh, and, and no one else stood up against him. He knew this was wrong, so he stopped after yeah, after, after one day of doing it. When they got to Elephant Island, they then, he then created another deck on the boat, made it seaworthy mm. and sealed it over. And that's the only reason they got to South Georgia to save men. But he when, hasn't been on it. He hasn't been on it. And even when he got to South Georgia, Georgia he was the one who made the crampons. Well, that's brilliant. Well, you're talking about him on telly now, and I'm sure you're going to be thinking about him, as you say, when you, when you do this road. Will you come back and speak to us? Maybe we'll talk to you on it, and then certainly once you've done it, will you come back and talk absolutely, to Absolutely, absolutely. That would be incredible. And I hope you raise loads of money as well for the British Heart Foundation. Jamie, thank, you. thank you. And uh, can I just say that if anyone wants to follow it, it's at activewater.com. And the Just Giving page is Jamie Road Challenge. OK, when we Excellent. put the video out on social media, we'll make sure we put that on for people to follow it as well. Jamie, thank you. Thank you. Lovely to see you as well. Thank you and thank good you. luck. You know